Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Nah, that's not gonna work. Hey guys, welcome back to the. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. <laughs> this is hard. You just do it normally. Maybe I'll just stay here normally. No speeding today. All right, roll the intro. We'll do it as per normal. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing really well out there. Thanks very much for clicking on this video. Uh, massive one today. We've got 10 of my best sold sales items to take you through. And I also wanna take you through my weekly sales figures as well, just to let you know how I'm tracking. And it's been an okay week this week. I've slowly just been chipping away and I'll bring in those numbers a little bit later on. But if you're here for the very first time, I'm a full-time reseller. I sell on eBay and Facebook Marketplace. And I also do three videos right here on YouTube every single week talking about it. So if you're into reselling by any means, if you're full-time, part-time, even if you're just thinking about maybe getting into it, go ahead and give this channel a subscribe and, and also give the video a like as well because that's very much appreciated. Uh, I really want to dive into it today. I'm excited to bring you the items that I've got. Hopefully you can find them yourself and make the same sort of profit. Uh, let's get stuck into it. I'm pretty excited. Hope you are too. All right, let's kick the episode off with a really nice piece of furniture, the Manang Entertainment Unit. Now I picked this one up off Facebook Marketplace for $50, pretty standard. I'm always looking for furniture around that price point and I knew through having done a few sales in this one before that it was going to sell between 150 to 250. I've had a few that have sold around that price point. Um, now I'm starting to offer free delivery and I'm finding that free delivery service is a huge plus. People will pick me over a competitor because I'm offering and deliberately offering free delivery in my title. Um, so I've had a great result here in the space of four days with this one. It sold for $170. I only just dropped it off in the suburb across from me so it wasn't too far of a drive. I've made $120 profit in the space of four days. And Look a lot of people will ask me on Instagram Matt, you sell a lot of furniture, I want to get into it, what do I buy? And I would really just say buy through experience. Just buy one item, see how it goes, and then whether or not it goes well or not will determine whether or not you buy it again. The worst situation you'll do if you're buying at a low price is just simply getting your money back. I don't think this is a money loss opportunity here. I think you're always going to make something. It's just a matter of learning what sells well to make the most amount of money possible. I'm giving you all the hints and tips here with showing you the items that I'm selling in the furniture space, but really just go out and give it a go. Buy something you deem to be really good quality and buy it around that $50 price point. I'm working off Aussie dollars here, but equivalent what is whatever is 50 Aussie for you and give it a go. Put it on Marketplace, see if you make a few dollars, learn from the experience and keep charging on. Item number two is another entertainment unit. This was a white two drawer, really nice white gloss entertainment unit that I picked up. Actually in a set of two, I bought two of these for $45 off uh, a lady and it was a really good buy because uh, these actually retail for $430. I think they're an Amart furniture piece. Um, so I knew that I had a good one here. I knew I had two really good ones here and they were both in great condition. And uh, this one did end up selling in the space of 10 days for $140. Now the screenshot here, will say 135, but uh, the lady was actually really kind enough to give me $5 for delivery. She uh, thought that I was really quick in the sense of getting it across to her straight away, and she gave me a $5 tip. So incredibly uh, generous of her, uh, very, very thankful, brought my profit up to $95, and I had a 10-day sales cycle, as I mentioned. So I think the 10-day sales cycle, certainly for me, I don't generally have furniture for more than a week at absolute most. It's generally three to five days it's out of there. Um, so I think it's just given the time of the year. It's, it's December, it's leading into Christmas currently, and I think that's why these items that would normally sell a lot quicker are just hanging around for a few extra days longer. Um, still making the similar sort of profit, $100 to $150, which is great. Um, but do look out for the entertainment units because I'm just moving so many of those at the moment. Don't know why, I'm just sort of fixed in on, on looking for entertainment units more than anything. But they're certainly coming up uh, with some great results for me. Now I've included this third item of the day in because it was a brand that I wanted you guys to be on the lookout for. Personally, I'd never seen this brand when I was in the op shop. I just pulled the shoe up and had a look at it on eBay and it looked like it was selling pretty well. So I bought two pairs and this week they've both sold. So I wanna get that across to you and let you know about it. The brand is Zira. It is a New Zealand women's, uh, predominantly women's shoe brand um, and it's just proven to have really good comps on eBay and a pretty fast sales cycle for me too here. So I bought the uh, first pair, it was the Nancy uh, shoe. So uh, Zira, Nancy. 
Etsy and uh, these sold for $40. So it was $40 in free shipping. I've definitely gone unders on this one based on the time it took to sell. Um, it sold in the space of just five days. And when you take out the postage and the fees, I've made a $20.60 profit buying them for $7 in the op shop. But I really do think I could have got a whole lot more for these. Um, because I've sold two of them in the same week in very, very short periods of time, I think I could have gone $50 to $60 for these shoes. Um, but in the end, $40 free post. I got the sale pretty quick. And I think it was just me, obviously, underselling it uh, that got the results so fast. But it's it's definitely a brand to be on the lookout for. People are after it. And uh, I was wrapped to get that first sale. And in a second, I'll show you the second pair that I was able to sell as well. So the second pair was the Umbria, so Zira Umbria. And uh, these ones I bought for actually just $2.65. It was a really low purchase price. I sold these ones for $45 free postage. Um, so when you take out the post and the fees, these I've made $29.30 on, uh, and they sold within the space of 10 days. So two really fast selling brand um, shoes in a brand that I personally hadn't heard of before, but I will definitely be on the lookout for these and I'll definitely be pricing them a little bit higher uh, when I come to sell them next. Um, don't know how common they are. I personally don't spend a lot of time in the women's shoe range. And if you do, maybe you know about this brand and you've gone on to sell it personally for yourself pretty well. Let me know in the comments below if that has been the case. But for me, it is a brand new item that I've recently found and I've had some pretty good success with it with a fast sale and a few dollars worth of profit. So really happy with that. Wanted to bring that one across to you today. I always want to bring across items that I'm finding for the very first time. And for this week, it was definitely the brand Zira in the women's shoe range. Now, I wanted to put this one into the episode because we've, I've made a bit of a mistake here. I've listed it for too low of a price point and it sold within the space of a heartbeat. It was a 52-inch uh, Samsung Plasma TV in great working order. I bought this off a bulk deal off Facebook Marketplace amongst a few other items. Those items have gone on to sell for about a $300 profit. This was the last item left over and I took a long time to list it. I know it's coming into Christmas, so I just wanted to get it out of the house for the Christmas time and I put it up for just $60 and it sold in the space of one hour yesterday on Facebook Marketplace and I've got 10 inquiries within the first hour and you think, oh no, you know, that many inquiries, you've clearly underpriced this thing. And I know that I had, but I just didn't realize that I dramatically underpriced it. I haven't got into look into the research on this one to see what I could have actually got for it, but I think it might've been more over $100. So really shot myself in the foot. I've lost a few dollars from it. I have got a fast sale. I've still made a $40 profit because I bought it for 20, um, but I've learned a lesson. Do your research on every single item you buy. If you're gonna put all the time and effort into sourcing the item, make sure you get top dollar for it. One thing that I am pretty good at pricing though is my footy boots. And I managed to sell these Adidas Predator 14 men's footy boots. I think they're a size 11 uh, for a really good price. Got them done for $85 on eBay. And uh, I took an offer. I had these at 95 and took an offer at 85. Happy to get the result done because I only bought these for $10 in an op shop. These are a 2014 World Cup edition with that pattern. And uh, I know that those are looked after and sought after because I've, I've sold a few of them before. And I managed to obviously take postage and fees, make a $56.75 profit on this one. So the sales cycle was just 10 days. I've sold a couple of these exact shoes, these Predator World Cup editions before. If you can find this shoe in the op shop, you will make money. They, I, I just will always get sort of $80 plus on this one. Um, so an awesome result there. Look out for your footy boots because some of them can make a bit of money. Now, every now and again, I'll take myself out on a Saturday morning to a few local garage sales. And I'm glad that I did a few weeks ago because I managed to find this double set cassette tape player. And um, this one was an awesome one because it actually came with a case that had over 36 cassette tapes in there as well. And uh, I negotiated him down to just $20 for the purchase of everything. I got the 36 cassette tapes and I got the cassette tape player as well. And they all worked completely fine. I gave everything a test and it all worked very, very well. So I put this one up onto eBay for $250, but took an offer for $230. And after buying for just 20 bucks, I was thrilled with this one when it came in at the start of the week. So unfortunately though, this for me with my free pricing model for postage, um, it ended up having to go to WA. So I went to Western Australia, which is the opposite side of the country from where I am. And uh, it, ended up, it ended up costing me a little bit in postage. So postage worked out to $43.65 and the fees on eBay came to about 30 bucks as well. So while it was a $230 sale, I realized a $136 profit. But 
it sold within the space of just three weeks. So it was a pretty fast sales cycle. The old cassette tape players, you can make some money out of them. Uh, I knew that I could based on the comps. I knew that the one that I had being a double deck uh, cassette tape player would go on to sell pretty well. But yeah, $136, there's money to be made in the old cassette tapes. Now I talk about these items quite a bit because they are pretty much bread and butter items for me. It was the Neymar Junior Barcelona FC soccer jersey. Now I bought this in an op shop for just five bucks, which is pretty standard. But this one had this name and number on the back of the jersey and it also had tags as well. So a little, I went a little bit higher end. It wasn't genuine by any means, but I'll let them know about that in the description. It sold for $40 and that was free postage. So when I took out the $7.20, uh, I realized a profit of $27.80 for a jersey that was bought for just five bucks in the op shop. Plenty of money to be made in this space. Do look out for your sporting jerseys. They do go on sale for a pretty good profit. And I do generally find that they are pretty underpriced around the $5 in the op shops. Another brand that I've spoken about a little bit before, but I really want to keep mentioning it because it is genuinely selling quite well for me, and that is Nina Pasadena. I managed to pick up these shorts, these denim uh, jean shorts. Uh, these were bought for just five bucks, and Nina Pasadena is a Melbourne-based fashion brand, but it sells incredibly well. Quite a trendy brand amongst the youngsters out there. This one sold for $38.94, and I've managed to put in the postage of $7.20, uh, take out some fees. I've made $21.65 for a pair of shorts, and I think if I'm profiting 20 bucks plus for shorts, that's that's brilliant in my eyes. I'm really happy with that. Uh, the sales cycle was about a month, 33 days, so not too bad. But the brand Nina Pasadena, I've sold it quite a bit and I really do want you guys out there to be looking for it because it goes on to sell pretty quick and for pretty good profit. Next one up is this Prince Forever CD. Now this one was awesome because it was sealed and I bought it for just $1. And uh, I mean, it's great when you're buying CDs for a dollar that comp for 25 to 30, but when you're buying them sealed, that's even better. And uh, that's exactly what this one was. So I grabbed it for a dollar and he just sold today, just sold this morning when I woke up for $24.97. Uh, so that's just awesome. For me, CDs, they're a very easy item to list. Uh, it takes two seconds to list a CD, and if you can buy a few of them at one time, you're probably investing about $5 in, you're getting five CDs, you're getting five listings into your eBay for the day, uh, if you can get back home and list it. Postage for me is only $2.80 because I put it in a prepaid envelope, um, and then the fees came out at $3.24, so this one came out as a profit of $17.93 for a CD that I paid just $1 for. Huge profit margins, not massive dollars, but if you can do that at volume and you can go, be going out and buying a heap of CDs, that all accumulates. And like I said, it's an easy item to list. So one of my favorite items to source, I love digging through CDs, I love digging through DVDs, and uh, slowly they do accumulate in some pretty good profit overall. So they were my 10 best sold sales items of the week, guys. And I will throw in a bonus 11th item because it's just popped up as I've been recording. Uh, it was my Krusty Demons DVDs that I bought in a trip to the thrift just on Thursday gone. I was out in the pouring rain, picked up a few items and the Krusty Demons DVDs were one of them. They've just popped up as a $42.70 sale. I wanted to get $50 for them, but I've taken an offer here at $42.70. When you take out $7.20 for postage, I've made 35 bucks. Take out the $4 that I bought it for, that's $31. Take out a few fees. We're looking at a $25 profit. So DVDs, CDs, as I mentioned, they do go on to make some pretty good money. I was really happy to get a fast sale there with the Krusty Demons, so I thought I would include it into this episode. Um, so that's it. They were my 10 items, 11 items there with a the bonus one. Um, normally at this stage of the episode, I get you to put it into the comments uh, what your best sold sales item was this week, what you bought it for, what you sold it for, where you picked it up. I love to go out and look for those same items as well. It works both ways. But what I'm going to do moving forward is I'm going to pick the best comment and I'm going to feature you in next week's episode. So I'll put up your Instagram or your YouTube channel, whatever the case may be, and uh, let everyone else know what you sold. So a great way to obviously to promote any of your social media channels uh, that you might want to promote. So go ahead, put it into the comments below what you sold for the best uh, amount of profit or your most favorite item, whatever the case may be. And uh, I'll pick the best one for next week's episode. Um, all right, so sales numbers. I love to jump into my sales numbers as well and just give you a bit of a look at how I'm going on a weekly basis. Uh, this week was um, not, not the greatest week. Um, it wasn't the worst week either. It was sort of just an average week. Uh, I'll pull up the numbers here to give you a bit of a look and um, I was able to sell 25 items. So it's about five less than what I would normally do. I sort of average around 30. Uh, cost of goods was $205. My total sales are currently at midday on a Sunday sitting just under the $1,000 mark. So we're at $968.67. 
Uh, the profit there of 763.96 has resulted in a profit margin of 79%. So not too bad. Um, you know, I obviously, I actually like to profit 960 and make about 1200 in sales. I think that's more about pass, uh, a pass mark for me. So I am definitely a little bit under this week, but I'm also aware that eBay leading into Christmas, people aren't buying as much on eBay, um, obviously because of the postage um, not arriving in time for Christmas day. Um, so I am trying to place more of a focus, which I will be next week on Facebook Marketplace and, and getting that local pickup um, that could obviously extend right the way through to Christmas Eve if people are buying last minute items. So I think that's maybe why it's been a bit quiet I've still been able to sell two pieces of furniture this week, um, which has kept my numbers up towards that $1,000 mark. But my eBay has been slow. I don't know if it's been slow for you out there. If it has, let me know in the comments below. But um, yeah, it's certainly been slow for me over the last sort of five or six days. Pretty much the whole week, actually, this week. Uh, I haven't resulted in too many sales. I haven't dropped off my listing. Um, I'm still listing a minimum of 10 items every single day. I'm staying consistent with that but I'm just not getting the sales results come in as I, as I did previously. So maybe that's just the time of the year. I, I think the crucial thing here, when you start to have a period of not getting sales is you sort of fall off the listing front and you don't list as much. And that can pretty much be the worst thing that you could do is to go, oh look, I'm not making any sales. I just won't list as much this today or, or this week. Um, you've really got to stay consistent. So what I've personally done this week while the sales have been low is I've really made sure I'm tripling down on getting my listings in. Um, and uh, I, I think hopefully it'll turn around. It'll, it'll slowly catch itself back up. Um, but yeah, you, you'd really just be shooting yourself in the foot if you stopped your listings in that scenario. So I'm gonna keep charging on. I'm still motivated. Um, I'm happy to get the, hopefully over a thousand dollars with the sale this afternoon. And uh, we'll charge on into what potentially will be quite a slow week, I'm guessing, next week, um, being Christmas week. But um, we'll see how we go. I'm going to buy a few more pieces of furniture, I think, next week, just to stock up on that and, uh, and just see how we go. And hopefully we can get a few more sales in and, and hit that $1,000 next week as well. So uh, that's everything. Hope you've enjoyed the episode. Give the comment uh, of your favorite sales item and uh, also obviously give this video a like. If you've got anything out of it, I really do appreciate you tuning in. Always appreciate you tuning in in and uh, I do look forward to seeing you in next week's episode so until then we'll see you soon thanks guys